Hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy, and I am tickled pink that you stopped in to spend some time with me today. If you are my subscribers, you know I love you from the bottom of my heart. And if you're visiting me today, I am so thankful that you're here. I would like to invite you to subscribe and become a part of our little family here on YouTube. Kick back, get you a cup of coffee or some hot chocolate, and just enjoy 2021 with me. I couldn't fit all 20 DIYs into one video, so this is episode one with one through 10 in no particular order. So just sit back with me and let's share some love, laughs, and DIYs of 2021. I love you guys so much, and I'm so thankful for all that you've done to support my little channel. My first DIY is gonna be a rooster wall decor. It is one of my favorite all-time DIYs. I have a piece of a waste basket that I got from the Dollar Tree, and this is a small embroidery hoop that I purchased at Walmart for like $2.50. And there's a little chicken napkin holder that I got for 47 cents on clearance at Crackle Barrel. So I've got my waste basket, and I'm just cutting a small piece off of it with my cutters and I'm gonna kind of stretch it out with my hands just a little bit. I'm going to lay my embroidery hoop down on top of that and I'm going to staple it to the wastebasket. And then I started to try to cut it with my cutters and I found that I was doing much better with just scissors because it's pretty easy to cut through this garbage pail from Dollar Tree. So I just used my scissors and cut it. Then I took some regular old jute twine and I put it in a needle and I am threading it around the very top of my embroidery hoop to cover up that little spot at the top of the embroidery hoop where it's screwed together. So I went to Amazon and tried to purchase some beads and accidentally bought these half beads, but it was a great thing because I'm gonna use those. I've got my chalkboard paint that I get from the Dollar General and I mixed it with a little bit of water and I'm just going to make a stain out of this. So I just dunked my little half beads in that stain just for a few moments, get them out and dry them off. So while my beads are drying, I had to figure out a way to get my chicken to stick to the chicken wire. So what I did is I took three discs and they're actually little wick holders that you would stick a wick through um, from a candle, like a floating candle, and I used three of those, and I glued those together to the chicken, and then glued that to the embroidery hoop, and so my chicken is on there very secure, and by now, my beads are dry, so I'm going to go all the way around my little hoop with these little half beads. And then I took some of that black chalkboard paint and painted the beak back on the chicken because I had knocked the color off of the beak whenever I was putting the beads on. And I just kind of went around that chicken and just very, very lightly put a couple of darker black streaks around him. And I took my lighter to burn off all the little fuzzies that come with the jute twine. I found this sign the other day at the Dollar Tree that says out of office and it has a glass in the middle and I took 100% acetone which is nail polish remover and I tried to get it off with that it wasn't budging so I had to take a razor and the combination of the razor and the acetone uh, I finally got the words off of there. After I got my glass cleaned up real good, I decided on the placement of my chicken and I used some E6000 and some hot glue to go around there. And I don't put my hot glue and my E6000 in the same spot. I put just a few dabs of each on there in different locations. And I took this boxwood that I got from the Walmart and I put two sprigs of it down at the bottom I attached it there in the middle, right underneath the chicken. Not only for decor, but I am crazy about chickens. I'm a crazy chicken lady. I have many of them. And so I found this ribbon at Hobby Lobby. I had to get it. It has chickens on it. I do my bow in a very simple crisscross motion and then you just push the middle of it down. So I tied it with the jute twine 
and I decided to put my bow in the very center underneath the chicken. Anything with chickens on it, I'm just crazy about. This ribbon is the cutest thing from Hobby Lobby with the chickens. It, so cute, so cute. And here it is, such a simple decor piece and I absolutely love this one. It is still hanging up in my living room to this day. I start off with a plaque that I purchased at Goodwill for $1.99 and I'm going to take my mineral chalk paint and I'm going to paint it. It's the Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint and I gave it one good coat and I'm drying it. I'm going to take my white Waverly Chalk Paint and I'm going to distress it all around the edges and lightly in the center. Then I go over it one more time with the mineral chalk paint in a distressing type motion because when you mix the two together, I just think it makes it look better and it blends it all out well. Now I've got a windmill. I got this from the Dollar Tree and all I'm going to do is just go around with my mineral and just very lightly distress each of the little blades of the windmill, I guess you would call them. Now, I took two dowels, they're from Dollar Tree, and I glued those to the back of my windmill in a, like, upside down V formation, and they're going down to make the bottom part of the windmill, and then I just took some smaller skewers to make the X's in that so it would appear like a real windmill. Then I take my apple barrel burnt umber and I'm going to use mostly my finger because I like the way that it blends in. Now burnt umber is the closest color that I can come up with that looks like rust. It absolutely rusted this up and made it look old and vintage. And this is when I had first purchased my Cricut and I was still learning how to use it. I made the F, the R, the M. And I'm just lightly going over that with the mineral chalk paint after I get it down on my sign. And then I'm going to take my windmill and brush over it one more quick time. And then I'm going to place that windmill for the A in the middle of this sign. Now, when I went to the craft show back in October of this year, this windmill sign actually sold for $25. I took my Loctite power grab and I'm going to put it on the back and I also used hot glue also for a right now hold. Now this Loctite power grab takes a little bit to dry but it will not go anywhere once it dries and I just placed it right down on the back. I placed a couple of paint bottles on my windmill so that it had a little bit, little bit of weight on it and it could dry and I left it overnight and I had some cedar boards from an old bench that I had cut into a frame to go around my sign. And my husband 45'd that the angles for me because this was before I could do that. So I have learned something this year. And what I did was just glue the corners together to make the frame. And then I cut off the edges like the tips of a popsicle stick and used it to go over those corners for extra stability. Once my frame was ready, I could take my sign and just lay it right down into that frame. And I actually ended up putting some hot glue there and shooting a couple of nails with a little brad nailer. And this is one of my favorite projects that I have ever, ever made. Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what in the world are you waiting for? Hit that little red button and there's a bell beside it. And when you ring that, YouTube's going to let you know every single time that I upload a video. And also give me a big thumbs up, guys, because it really helps support my channel. Now let's move on. I've got three of those Halloween beware signs and I flipped them over and put a bunch of popsicle sticks to hold them together. Now I have some five gallon paint stir sticks and this is what I'm placing on the bottom and then I placed one on the top. 
I've got my sign already basically laid out the way I want it here. So I'm going to flip it over on the back and you get to see how many popsicle sticks I put on this thing. Now this was before I realized you don't have to kill it. It's still going to stay there. And I need to place my sides, which is what I've got in my hand right now. I need to place those on the back part so it can go down the sign a little bit to give it a little bit more support. Now, if I had this to do over, I would have just used the five gallon paint stir sticks over the whole thing. I'm not really sure why I didn't, unless that gather sign just didn't fit in it. But I used these smaller one gallon paint stir sticks, which I am putting on right now to create the sides, and that's going to hold the top of that sign up. And across the top there is my third and final paint stir stick. I made sure to take my stapler after I had hot glued everything and staple it down because we don't want this to go anywhere. Now I cut out a small piece of chicken wire that's going to go across that back. And I'm just laying that down, and I'm using my stapler to staple that chicken wire all the way down and around on the top part of my sign. I take my Waverly Antique Wax, and I just poured it all over that sign. And I'm going to use my paintbrush to smooth it out, and I did not use a baby wipe to wipe it off. I wanted a very dark color. Then I took my white Waverly chalk paint and I am going to go all over this sign in a distressing type motion. And I went pretty heavy handed on it because I had a certain idea of what I wanted for this sign. And I'm also going to sand it down which dulls it. I took the word gather and went over it just a heavy distressing motion with my white chalk paint and I'm going to place it at the top. On my Cricut, I cut out this Farm Fresh Eggs, and I put that on the front. It's a beautiful decal. I drilled two small holes in the front of my sign, and I put this wire basket from the Dollar Tree at the front of the sign, and it's going to be held on by a tie wrap going through those two holes through the back. You know me. I had to put all my eggs in one basket. Burr, burr. I take one tumbling tower block from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue that underneath my basket. That way the basket will not kind of slump down. It's going to hold up. I've got this garland that I purchased off of Amazon and I cut it into two pieces and I'm going to put one at the top and let it drape down around the word gather. I cut off a nice size of burlap and I'm going to place the burlap inside the basket and glue it down. I took some very large tacks, they're furniture tacks, and I painted them black actually with a sharpie and I put them on the tops, uh, the corners of my sign here. And that's going to complete this sign. I've had several people try to buy this sign from me over the past year, but I would not sell it. And these are real eggs I stuck in this, by the way. Compliments of my prize chicken penny P.O. The next one is going to be another sign from the first of last year. I have these two little tag type signs that come from the Dollar Tree. And I put a buku of... The popsicle sticks on the back. I don't know what it was with me and the popsicle sticks. Why I thought I had to put 500 to make it stay. <laughs> but thank God I learned that you don't have to. Look at that. That is ridiculous, Kathy. Goodness gracious. So I put about 10 on there, looks like. Didn't have to do that. Plus, I used a staple gun, so it's very secure. I have this gorgeous contact paper from Amazon. I cut off a piece of that. And at... Contact paper is very easy to work with. You basically cut your piece off how you need it, and it's like a sticker. You just start pulling it back a little bit, and you hold it, you know, put it on whatever you want it on, and you slide it with one hand, sliding the back off, and you're using your other hand to smooth it out. 
Now, around the edges of this, I wrapped it like a present. I just cut it down and made like little slits in it, just like it was a present so that it would go around this perfectly and there would be no hangover. But I cannot get over those popsicle sticks. What was I thinking? It is pretty cool, though, to go back down memory lane to see how far I've come and the things I've learned this year. This sign still hangs right over my crafting table today. I made a decal from my Cricut that says General Store. I've always had a thing for old general stores. I don't know why. Maybe because I used to watch the Waltons all the time when I was a kid. And I loved Ike and Cora. Cora Beth. I always wanted to name a child Cora Beth because of that silly show. <laughs> and anyways, it's Ike and Cora Beth Godsey. That was their names. They had a general store. And I loved that show. So basically, I just put all of my decal down on this sign. I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I went all around the edges and I distressed it and then I took some thick jute twine that come from Walmart and I went around the sides um, about two times. I just glued it on the back and then wound it around the sides probably two times on each side. And then I just made a simple little hanger from the jute in the back. And guys, that's it to this sign and like I said, it still hangs over my craft table today. The next one is another gorgeous DIY from early last year. I have four of these 5x7 frames from the Dollar Tree. I take Chiffon Cream by Rust-Oleum. And these are the weathered looking type frames that have the divots in them that look like, that's the only way I can describe it is they're weathered and they're so pretty when you distress them. So I distressed it with my Chiffon Cream around all of these. I have a pad of contact paper that I got from Walmart. It's small contact paper, and I found the prettiest purple and white pattern. So I said, okay, we're going to do purple. And I just sized it up to the backs of the, the little insert that goes in that to see what size I needed. I cut it out, and I put it in all four frames. I used super glue, the Gorilla Super Glue, and I glued all of my four frames together. And of course, I put the popsicle sticks on the back. I actually just put like three or four on the back. I wanted to make sure the back was going to be really good and secure, so I cut out a piece of foam core board that was the exact same size as those four frames together, and I glued it to the back. I took a piece of burlap and I put it through an embroidery hoop. It's a medium size embroidery hoop, medium to small, I would say. I opened the hoop up and I placed my little burlap inside of it and closed it back up. And then I glued it around the edges of my embroidery hoop. I took my little half beads and I went all the way around my embroidery hoop with these. Then I took some of the eucalyptus stems that comes from the Walmart and I tie wrapped those to the very bottom of my embroidery hoop. I took my lavender color Waverly paint and I also took a color called metallic rose gold and it's made by Folk Art, and I mixed those up, and then I mixed another purple color up. I'm not really sure what it was, and I just kind of mixed it up and made my own little concoction of a beautiful purple color, and I had this word blessed that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was only like a dollar something, and I simply painted it with my concoction of purple. Then I went around those little half beads, and I painted those with the purple color. Then I took my white chalk paint and I distressed over all of that purple with the white color. Then I hot glued the word blessed right in the center of that burlap. And then I had some beautiful Sola wood flowers that I had got. They were the small ones and I painted those. I, 
I don't dunk those. I actually just take a paintbrush and paint them. And I, I painted them a couple different colors of purple. I didn't want it to be matchy-matchy. I wanted it to be different shades of purple. So I did that, and I also did some chiffon cream. And I'm just going to place these little solo wood flowers kind of down at the bottom of my beautiful little blessed sign. I took the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, the one that has the lace in the middle. I wrapped it around my embroidery hoop and I'm going to hot glue it around to the back so it's gonna hold up the embroidery hoop. And then I just take a couple more of the solo wood flowers and put them in the upper right hand corner of my picture. The next one that we done was an Easter DIY, and it's going to be right back around here before you know it. I lost the first part of how I started to make this. This is an 8x10 canvas frame from the Dollar Tree, and I just took the canvas off of it. Now, the way that I made these little slats is I took, there was two sizes of popsicle sticks. Now, there is a giant and there is a jumbo. The one that I'm missing that I needed was a super jumbo, and that's the size that I used. You get those at Walmart. It's between those two sizes. You cut the ends of it off, and you just glue it kind of catty corner, like sideways almost, in the frame so that it will look like a slat or almost like a blind. I took my Waverly Antique Wax, and I just took a baby wipe, and I wiped it on with this baby wipe and kind of wiped it off with the exact same baby wipe just kind of rubbed it in i went lightly and i went very carefully in between each of those slats i felt that it needed a couple more of the slats so i just placed those on there and this is how i do it you can see I just take my hot glue gun and glue the sides down and it holds it on at an angle. Now I couldn't get my fingers up in all of those slats perfectly so I use like a smaller edged paintbrush to get up in there really well. I measured and cut out a piece of white foam core board and that way it would m go perfectly in the back of my picture frame. I cut off one of the squares of this gorgeous napkin that has a little bunny on it. It is so cute. And then I'm just going to carefully cut around the picture of the bunny. And we're just going to Mod Podge this picture very carefully down to our foam core board. I started off in the very center of the napkin and worked my way out to the edges. And then I didn't have any saran wrap, so I actually had to take a baggie and use it. But hey, it works. It doesn't matter. There was no wrinkles in this whatsoever. I took my handy dandy little dryer and dried it really well and made sure that it was just going to fit perfectly in the backing. I flipped it over and glued it down. And then I just went around the outside one more quick time with Mod Podge. I had some flower stems that I had got from the Dollar General store and I just cut them into very small pieces and I'm just going to glue them around the bottom part of this bunny to make it look like he's hiding in the grass, which it turned out perfectly. It gave it a beautiful 3D effect. I found some gorgeous little lavender picks, and these were actually from the Dollar Tree, and I just kind of placed that lavender in there. Then I took the lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree and made just a little shoestring bow, and I placed it right in the center. And that's it. This DIY got a lot of views on my still brand new channel, and it was a huge hit. But look how pretty it is. It looks like a shutter. It was just, it's amazing. And it's held up this whole time. Wow.
Now for the next DIY, I have three of those frames that were so popular in the spring at the Dollar Tree. And I pulled everything off the backing of them. And they have this weird wax on them. So I suggest that you sand them down before you try to stain them or paint them. I just put the wax on and dried it. And it stuck, but it didn't stick as well as it could have. And then I went over them with white after I did the brown. I ordered this wooden chicken off of Etsy. I absolutely love to get my wood pieces off of there. And I just stained it with my Waverly Antique Wax. I put it on with a paintbrush and just wiped it off with a baby wipe. I cut out three small pieces of chicken wire and just stapled that down to the backs of each of my little frames. Then if you have any excess that's hanging over the sides, you can just cut that off with scissors or your clippers, just whichever you find more comfortable to cut that chicken wire with. I took this white shiplap looking paper that you get from the Hobby Lobby and we're going to place that on the backs of each of my little signs. And I really prefer to use a glue stick. I believe this is when I started using the glue stick and I was like, wow, why was I using Mod Podge that whole time? Because it's so messy and makes the bubbles, but this never does. It's so easy, sticks right down. On my Cricut, I made the word farm fresh eggs and I put one word on each of my little boards or my signs and I'm just going to place them in the backs of my little signs. Then I glued each of my signs to a piece of foam core board, and it spells out Farm Fresh Eggs. I took some Apple Barrel white acrylic paint to distress around the word Farm Fresh Eggs because it was in black, and it would have been smarter if I would have done this before I put down the chicken wire. And then I also went around the whole sign and distressed it with the white. And then I picked up my little chicken, that's Penny P.O. by the way, and I distressed her also with the white. Then I took my black chalkboard paint and I'm going to distress around that chicken with that color. And I'm also going to distress around my sign with the black color. I have this pre-made grapevine wreath from Christmas. I'm going to put that on my picture along with these Dollar Tree florals. I just picked very small pieces off and put those on my wreath. I also added some of the eucalyptus picks from Walmart, the lavender from that little sprig, and then I made a little shoestring bow tie from that lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I just glued my wreath to the side of my picture and then I placed two little eggs because it was Easter time also and the sign did say farm fresh eggs. I toned down that stark white color just a little bit with a more ivory color to make it look like a real egg and this is cute as a button. We are almost finished. We're going into number nine. On the next DIY, I have three little yard steaks from the Dollar General. One has a chicken, one has a cow, and one has a pig. And then I have a large, it's like a 16 by 20 canvas pitcher from the thrift store. I'm just gonna take the steaks off of the back of the cow, chicken, and pig because I just want the animals themselves. And then I'm going to take this canvas off by using my X-Acto knife to go around the outside of the staples and pulling that canvas off. We're gonna do a reverse canvas. I took the canvas part off of there and then I just pull the rest of it off of the frame because we don't need that whatsoever. And what I'm gonna do is take my black chalkboard paint that I get from the Dollar General and add some water to it and make a stain. We're gonna stain the outside of this frame. 
I just squirted it on the frame, used a baby wipe to kind of rub it in and rub off the excess. You flip the sign over and then I'm going to just staple down that canvas to the very back of my sign. And then there's a little bit of excess hanging over and we're just gonna cut that off with the scissors. My little animals had different sayings on them and it just didn't really go. And I wanted to paint them black anyway. So I took my black chalkboard paint from the Dollar General. It's my favorite chalkboard paint. It comes out very matte and I just go over each one of these animals with my black paint. I wanted to make these look almost galvanized, so I took the color called Steel from Waverly, and I put it on a makeup sponge, and I just dabbed it on each animal. And each of these animals had like a hammered effect, if you know what I mean. Like, they look like somebody had hit them with a hammer. And then I'm going to use this metallics color in silver, and it's made by Folk Art. And then the last color that I'm gonna use is this light gray color, and it came from Waverly also. So if you want to make something look galvanized, your best step is to use like a dark gray, like a dark dull gray, then a bright shiny metallic, and then you're gonna use a light gray. Then if you want, you can even add white and black in there. And I do like using these makeup sponges because they have what appears to be little triangles on them. And if you will look at anything that's galvanized after you just keep going over it several times, it looks like it has little triangles in it, like, you know, stuff that really is galvanized. So that's how I like mine to look. I lost my straight edge and I had to have some kind of ruler or something, so I just used this package. What I'm doing is just making lines that are about two inches tall or wide, and it's gonna look like shiplap. I like to start off with a pencil, and then I go over it with a Sharpie or a black marker or something to that effect. And it doesn't have to be perfect because if you look at anything that's shiplap, those lines are not absolutely perfect either. And it's going to look totally real. Don't stress it. If you do try to do anything shiplap, just don't stress. It's going to look fine. When I'm doing shiplap and I use a Sharpie or a marker, I like to take a rag and the hand sanitizer and put a little bit of it on my finger on the rag and run it across those lines because it slightly smears them and dulls them down and makes it look like real shiplap. I took some stickers that I got at Walmart for 97 cents and I put the words moo, oink, and cluck on my animals. I took some of these little small wooden squares from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to glue one of those, or two of them actually, on the backs of each animal. These animals were kind of concave, so we needed them to stick to our canvas, so I put two on the back of each one and glued it down. When I got all my animals on there, I took some solo wood flowers that were just the original colors that they came. They were called the wood flowers. There's no color to them. They're almost like a light ivory color, white, and actually wood looking. And so I put some of those up in the upper right corner of the picture. But then I felt like it needed some kind of color, but a very dull color. So I chose a dark green color and I put two or three flowers just mixed in with those. I will leave my solo wood flower link down below in case you guys want any of those. I love mine. I took the Waverly silver lining and used that just to distress everything once again. Then I took my little half beads and I've got probably about 10 in each of these little cups and I'm just going to pour in my stain and water that's already mixed up. It's my black chalkboard paint and water and it makes a stain. I pour it in each of these little cups, shake it up, and then I took the little beads out and allowed them to dry. Then I just hot glued these little beads all the way around this picture to finish it off. 
And here's another one that turned out absolutely gorgeous. I'm still using it to this day also. Can you believe that we're finally at our last DIY? And if you're still here with me, thank you so much. And guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that and join our little family before you leave this video and give me a thumbs up to help my channel. I have this gorgeous gray and white placemat from Dollar General and it says Amazing Grace. And I'm just going to use a eight by 10 one of those flat canvases from Dollar Tree, two packs of rulers for a total of four, and we're gonna use Elephant Chalk Paint by Waverly. We're gonna mix it with a little bit of water to create a stain. Now these rulers have a black strip down the middle of them and you just pull it off. I go down it with that stain that I created and then I'm going to use a baby wipe to just take off a little bit of the excess and let it totally dry. I cut my rulers down to the size that I needed and then I just kind of lightly sand the edges so it's not rough and I'm just going to simply glue these rulers to the top of that where it says Amazing Grace because I don't want all of the checkered part to show. I don't want you to be able to tell that it is a placemat. So we're just going to put our rulers all around the words Amazing Grace. I flipped it over and used that 8x10 hard flat canvas and I'm going to glue that to the center back of this just for support. That's all we need that for. And then I'm going to take a couple of these little half beads. You know I'm loving these half beads. I really use the far out of them in this video. And I'm just going to lightly go over those with that stain, that elephant and water mixture. And I'm just going to kind of rub it on the beads and rub it off. I want it very lightly. And I'm going to put one bead on each corner to make four beads. I made a little jute hanger from the top by just putting a piece of jute on the back and then I glued it down and put a piece of tape and then I'm going to take a couple of these solo wood flowers again that are the natural wood flower and just put that up at the top and that's it. I wanted this to be sweet and simple. How sweet thy sound. Guys, if y'all stayed with me through this whole video, thank you and god bless you this was a long video and we are going to have episode two coming out very soon i hope you enjoyed this especially if you just recently joined my channel because these are all diys from the first of last year so if you haven't went back and watched you wouldn't have seen these diys and i don't want you to miss a single one of my diys I love you guys, and I am so thankful for you once again and for what you mean to this channel. See you soon. Hey there, everybody. My name is Crafty Bobby Joe, and I am Kathy's most favoritest, favoritest cousin, and she gave this here show over to me and told me that I can run it from now on. <laughs> Bobby Joe, what in this world are you doing, you silly thing? Kathy's going to be in here any minute, and she's going to be really mad at you for trying to take over her show. Mama, why you always got to ruin my fun? You always tear me down, make me want to cry. You're just jealous because I'm the most beautiful child you've ever had. You just don't want the chance for my Prince Charming to come and pluck me out of Tennessee like a dandelion blowing in the wind. I know you really well, Mom, and what you're up to. Bobby Joe, shut that nonsense up. I ain't never heard no likes of such in my life. Now listen, they ain't nobody gonna discover you from these here videos. I don't know why you keep trying to steal your cousin Kathy's thunder and come up in here and try to take over her subscribers and such. Well, Mama, I ain't trying to steal Kathy's thunder. I just, I always, you know, secretly be a little bit jealous of her because she's got all it takes. 
you know, everybody's always liked old Kathy, and then when it comes to me, they act like I got the plague or like I'm ugly or something. I don't understand why they treat me that way. Well, Bobby Joe, you know I'd rather break my arm than to talk ugly about anybody. But I do believe that's what it is. The whole family is jealous of you, baby, because you are the prettiest child in this family. And just so happens, you're my child, and I will protect you. I love you so much. We need to let these people just watch their video, baby. And just don't worry about making it on the big time right now. All right, Mama. I guess there's always tomorrow. Well, folks, Crafty Bobby Joe's gonna have to sign off. Since Mama left the room, if there's any big Hollywood agents watching this right now, I can sing, I can dance, I can do anything you want. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? You know, Mama used to always call me the natural little goody jarlin'. <laughs> <laughs> sure do hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was all me that did it, the production and all. Call me.